Well, greetings from Pennsylvania once again, and more specifically, the backyard of my friend John at his house here. So we are headed out on a little adventure this evening. This is Sunday, September 20th here. Beautiful, beautiful evening here. Sun will be setting in a little more than an hour, but we're going to head over to what's called Fort Indian Town Gap National Cemetery. I think it was established in 1976. It's where they bury uh, military veterans. And John's dad is actually buried over there. We were there about a month ago just to check things out. It actually it really is a cool place. Actually, he's just there. He just got off of work, so he's probably a little bit tired this evening. But anyway, we're going to head over there. Last time we were there, um, there was a lot of wildlife there, too. A lot of deer and turkeys were walking around. It's just a, kind of a neat place. So we're going to hang out this evening, take you guys along with us. Like I said, we're going to go visit his dad, who's buried there as well. Let, I might let John he'll probably talk a little bit about that, where and how his dad served. It was it was in World War Two, but anyway, let's get going. And here we are. Got John with me here. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be visiting, uh, what'd you say it was called again out there? I forget what it's called. That used to be a barn. Yeah, I, th I think. I know, I know there was an old building that used to be yeah. out there. Whether they used it or used parts of it. There's even out here, those are all graves out there, right? Uh, yeah, yep. They're out just there, right here, it's all graves, too. Yeah, they're just the flat ones. Yeah. Even all up here, these are all... These fields are filled with with graves. They're just been... Sorry, the rear view mirror's in the way there. They're just the flat graves that they can mow over, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's the one section. You see they have the flat... Now, they're not all like this. Some of the fields have the, the upright gravestones as well tons of tons of people out here though of course it's not just the uh, it's their it's his wife here yeah world war u.s navy world war ii so many people so many names It would take days just to film every single one of these people. Vietnam, Persian Gulf. And all throughout the the uh, cemetery here, there's just these fields that are all numbered. This is section 14. I think there's the numbers up into the 40s as far as sections. Yeah, here's someone from a uh, fought in the Korean War. So many out here. There's John up there chilling out. Cause like I said, he was working all day, so he's a bit tired. <laughs> but it's a nice evening out here. I do want to know too that the people buried here are the ones that made it home from the wars. Like you'll see a lot of World War II veterans here. They're the boys that you know, the men that made it home. And you'll see in other places um, in here, you'll see a lot of new burials from, you know, the the, te the 20 teens and stuff. And these are the these are the old men now that are dying who were who did fought, you know, in World War II and Korea and Vietnam, who are now passing away later on in life. So that's a, a lot of the people that are buried here. That's who they are. They're the ones that made it home. And over here are where the, the cremations occur. Well, they don't do the cremations here, but the men that are cremated and the women. What are they called? Columbarium. Columbarium. Columbariums. Yeah. So just. I think there's four or five here in a cemetery. This is the five, this is the newest one right here. I mean, they're they're pretty recent additions to this. Uh... 
Yeah, and John was saying some of these, the flat gravestones are also cremations as yeah, well. Yeah, my dad was cremated and he's one of the flat sections. And you can see off the distance they do have some standing tombstones. We'll check those out in a bit. Or gravestones, I should call them, I guess. No wildlife yet. Not like last time. Yeah, the deer and the turkeys. Crows. Yeah, so we'll get out somewhere up here and look at some of these. That's that's kind of cool there. Mm -hmm. How they're lined up. Yeah. So many people. Like I was saying earlier, these are the ones that came home. I guess I'll pull over up here. Yeah, look at just rows upon rows upon rows of people. Let's take a look at some of these. I mean, some of these are more recent, like I said. 2010, US Air Force, Korea. A wife, US Army, Korea. US Marine Corps. Persian Gulf, Iraq. Here's a Purple Heart recipient, Richard Dibler. U.S. Coast Guard, World War II. I mean, each one of these men has a story, or women, they all have a story of when and where they served. It's kind of almost slightly overwhelming. Like I said, this is just one section. Over by where? Over there by John, there's a whole nother whole another section of graves. Yeah, just so many people. US Army, Korea, World War II, US Army, World War II, a lot of World War II individuals over here. We got a Bronze Star recipient. All right. It's a beautiful place, a beautiful evening. And who is that? <laughs> it's actually, it's sort of weird. I decided to take a picture here. It's James. I think that's my friend's dad. Really? Yeah. Oh, Natisha. That sounds familiar. Yeah, actually. he was. Uh, he went to Lebanon Christian. His name is Eric Natisha. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I think that's his dad. Interesting. I think his dad's name was James, and he died. Yeah, 2001. Two thousand one. It's not too long ago. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so there are some deer out here. There's one right there by that tree. Oh, what behind the bushes? Yes, that deer is probably still up there, but here's some more. Oh, yeah, so these are more cremations. Yeah. Because they don't take up, obviously, they don't, see, there's John. They don't take up a full body length. I wonder if they just kind of buried his wife. Oh, they added his wife here? Yeah. See, Sarah J. Tree. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because the, your relatives, well, your spouse can be buried here with you as well. Oh, well, here's where the, the people place money on the grave. Yeah, that's like everything. Like, I think if it's a, is it a quarter you actually serve with the person? Yeah, I think penny just means... That you know them. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, there's a quarter you on got that. a quarter over here. Yeah, there's one there and one there. Oh, so these are, means you actually served. <clears throat> interesting. And once again, so many people. And me and John were talking again, like... Oh my God. What? It's a little different. Yeah, sorry about that. I just got cut off. John pointed out. Here's his name. It's spelled a little differently. It kind of, kind of caught his attention there. Yeah, and, and this is true of me as well. I'm loved by a hawk. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's well, we'll see about that. We're enemies. Yeah. But before he rudely cut me off. Sorry. <laughs> no. We, I was talking with him about how, I mentioned earlier, each one of these has a story, and he was kind of elaborated on it, like, you know, you know, the, the, the stories they guy tell, the battles they fought in, everything. 
Which one? Persian Golf. Oh yeah, they had to do some newer ones, Persian Golf. But yeah, these guys, each one of these could probably write a book about their experiences. And maybe for the most part, we'll never know all the places they've been. A lot of them didn't like to talk about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, because we have a friend, uh, what's his name, Brad Rupp? Yeah. When he came back, where did he serve? Persian? Uh, he served over in Afghanistan. Yeah, and he didn't really... Uh, yeah, he, he, you could see the difference in his eyes. Yeah. It's like, he talked a, a couple stories about it, some of the more comical stories, but he, he said it was just he saw things in the war, yeah. but it just... Yeah. Don't really want to talk about it. So, wow. Yeah. This is kind of... Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just fill all the way over there in the hill. There's more and more, more and more men and women. Oh, there's that deer right up ahead there. Sorry, cameras. I, I need to increase the iris there. All right, well, I opened up the iris a little bit more in the camera. There you can see the deer. It's getting pretty dark out here. Well, not <laughs> terribly dark, but in the shadows, it's a little hard for the camera to film there, but there she is. There's no hunting allowed here, so she's nothing to fear. There she goes. Getting a little too close for her. Oh, she's a beautiful animal, though. Yeah, she is young. Hey there. She's checking out John as he gets closer. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> not too far though. Wow, she really is not all that scared of people. Kind of prancing around. Yeah, this is the one monument we were looking for. The one that John was hiding behind the deer. That's pretty cool. This is the U.S. Submarine Veterans World War II Memorial. You can read that there, lest we forget. This memorial dedicated to the 3,505 officers and men who lost their lives on 52 U.S. submarines during World War II. You can kind of read the rest of it on your own there. Got some names down here. Oh, are these the names of the subs? The names of the subs. Oh, that's anywhere. interesting. How many men were each one? Oh, wow. As a year. 1941, the sea lion. Let me zoom move in for you. Five men. The date. Wow. Nineteen forty three. A lot of them in forty three. Nineteen forty four. Scorpion, two, 278 men. I think it's 78 men. It's probably the, the sub number SS 278 and then 78 men. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong number there, sorry. Yeah, that 278 is a sub number. It's 78 men on that sub. John corrected me. I was, only, I was looking through the camera lens, I didn't see that part. And a lot less than 1945. Kind of the last place I'd want to be in a war is in a sub. Yeah. Kind of, I don't know. Something goes wrong. Yeah, there's no way out. Yeah. yeah, and on the other side of that is this in memory of all military musicians, beagles across America. That's interesting. Our little girl is still up there yet. She had a pretty peaceful s setting there. She's eating amongst the graves with the American flags in the background. All right, so we're coming up where John's dad is buried, I think. Yeah, it's 27 to be up, up this there way. on the left. Into but the sun. If you want to go to 2022, this might be a good place to make oh, it. Oh, yeah. Of. We're looking for another monument, too. 
I guess we'll look for that one. Uh, this is section 27, so actually, never mind. We're here. Oh, right here, your dad is yeah. out here. Yeah, his dad's up there. We'll go check him out. We'll let John talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so up here is John's dad. And our buddy is still out there, the deer. So he's right up here. Yeah. Paul Miller. World War II, right? Yep. He fought in the Pacific. He uh, he had the opportunity because he had a hernia. He was 17, and they they rejected him. I think they rejected him twice or three times. So he went and had surgery. Because all all his friends, like his best friend Arthur Langle, who's buried over in Gettysburg, he fought in. Uh, Utah, Utah Beach in Normandy. He's the one that died there, right? Yeah, he was in the, some of the first waves, and you know, they never. They didn't stand a, lot a chance. Of those guys didn't stand a chance. <clears throat> but he had a couple friends that passed away, and then when he went, he got the surgery. They finally, because basically, they told him they were so desperate. Yeah, they taken anybody almost. At that stage, it took anybody. And in boot camp, at the end when they graduated, they had their uh, drill sergeant was a tough guy who fought World War One, and he started to cry because he knew that a lot of those guys wouldn't come back. Yeah, wow. And it was too, like, my dad was, there's, I have a bunch of pictures of my dad from then. The four guys that were in his uh, training unit were really, really close. Two of them got killed. One of them got killed in Okinawa, and I think the other one got killed in Iwo Jima. But he, he was in the cleanup crews. He was a mortar man. In uh, Pacific, they cleaned up like Guam and went through Okinawa and some of those other islands. And basically, what that means is they went in like some of the Japanese forces. They were told not to surrender, so right. they were in there. Those little foxholes and everything to clean up. Yeah, yeah the last remaining troops. And one, of, one of the cool stories about it is they used to have movie night, and it happened right next to the jungle. And he said what they do to encourage the Japanese soldiers to surrender. Oh, they, they play movies. They, they, well, they play the movies for the soldiers, but they put food on oh, plates at the edge of the jungle. Yeah. They said the Japanese soldiers would come out of the jungle, take the food plate, put their rifle down, sit in amongst the yeah. U.S. soldiers, watch the movie, go back out in the jungle, and when they realized these guys aren't going to hurt, yeah. them, they would surrender huh. eventually. But Interesting. It was, it was a really yeah. it was some cool stories. I don't remember you telling me that story. But. Yeah, that that was it was really interesting story but he he went the whole way he never had to fire a shot but then when they were in china they were guarding some of the japanese ships after J japan had surrendered and they used to the chinese would come in and try to loot the ships mm. so he had to fire at one of the, the chinese boats <laughs> from coming and stealing he said it was pretty tense there for a little bit but and it was like one of my my friends uh her dad, he did the same thing. My dad did his cleanup crew. Yeah. And he had gone uh, down one of the trails that they had. And here a Japanese soldier started coming the same direction. They were like going to pass each other. He was like, I had like one cartridge in my gun because he forgot stuff or something like that because he wasn't thinking he was going to run it. And he said, the guy just looked straight ahead. He looked straight ahead. They passed right by each other. Wow. Yeah. Did, and they didn't want to die. Right, yeah. Yeah, both of them huh. were like, I'm just going to ignore it. Hopefully this guy doesn't shoot me. But it was, my dad was, you know, it was, took tremendous bravery, like all those guys yeah. to, to go. I mean, he knew, I mean, my dad talked about, he knew that he could potentially not come back. And just to have the courage, it was just a different generation. Yeah, as you were where, talking about, you know, his friends not come back. We don't. Today's generation doesn't understand like no. your friends going somewhere and then not coming back. And a lot of these guys, they knew. Yeah. They, they. I mean, you were young, but you knew as. Yeah. From write, writing a, a book that I, you know, I talked to a number of my dad's friends and got in contact with different other guys like Dick Winters and whatnot. Yeah. They just, you know, these were tremendous and extraordinary men yeah and, and women that served in our military and deserve the utmost respect because what they faced is something that we can't comprehend it's so we haven't faced it's them. so different today with yeah. well we could get into that <laughs> with the young <laughs> yeah. folk it's so different they don't 
But yeah. man, hey, you look at the reason we're able to do, like even the kids today, right. like the people how they're is because, because of, of these, these people. people sacrifice. I always the one thing that always caught me when talking to these gentlemen that you know they survived, they went through terrible horrors, but they'd always say, "I'm not a hero." Like Dick Winters would always say, "I'm not a hero," and my dad would say, "I'm not a hero." He said, like, "The guys that are buried over right, there, the they're, ones that didn't come back because they paid the ultimate sacrifice." So it, it's it really is something, that, and this place is just. It's a beautiful place, but it, it, it's it's sacred, and just because of what these individuals sacrificed and gave for us. You know, as John was telling some of the stories about his dad, like with the movie, playing the movies for the soldiers to come out. Just like we mentioned earlier, you know, each of these guys has a story that they could tell us what their experience was. You know, and for most of them, we. Maybe we'll never know. I mean, they, they might have told stories to their families, but I don't know. What could each one of them tell us what they experienced? I'll look at all the pennies on this one. Oh, we found him. Paul Leonard Miller, U.S. Marine Corps, World War II, 2011. Yeah. That that seems like it's only it's gonna be 10 years soon. Yeah, wow, it doesn't seem that long ago that he went. I'm but I'm gonna just leave a penny because I don't wanna. I don't wanna leave a coin that I'm not supposed to. I think if you're family or something like that, you might leave something in this paper. Yeah, 2011, I was saying that seems so long ago. Cause, I mean, I, I knew John's dad, obviously, because we were friends in high school. I still remember the first time I met John's dad. Uh, you know. It's interesting. Not, you know, not all father-son relationships are the best. You know, John could talk about that. I could talk about that. I don't really have, I never really talk much about that on YouTube here. But I don't really have much of a relationship with my father. John could tell you about that, too. Yeah. Um, we've had some similar experiences with that, but, you know, it's still his dad, you know, and. When they're gone, they're gone, you know, you can't, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, it's difficult to explain sometimes. There's a lot of things, like, I can say I'm very proud of my dad. Yeah, despite, 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 despite yeah. all the things, and like, you know, before the end, we made our peace. Yeah. I'm thankful I was able to tell him that I loved him, and he was able to say the same, and I knew he meant it, but, you know, it, it's... It's still difficult. It's still difficult, and it's always sort of my emotions I don't know how exactly to feel sometimes yeah when I come out here yeah. but I've been coming out here a lot more often you know because it is coming up on 10 years and that last bit I have to give my dad credit the way he faced he had cancer and the way he faced it was with a courage that I hope you know when my day comes I'm able to face it just like he did and it was it was impressive and he, you know, at the, end of, at the end of his life, he cared only about like his family and what yeah. he could do to take care of us. And he, he was he had his issues, but he was a good man. You know, he was he was a very brave man because you know he didn't know he was going to be on the cleanup crews. I mean, right. it, not that the cleanup crews were easy, you know, but it was it was one of those things that you were at the end. There yeah. was less of a chance of you being ambushed, and you know you weren't going directly into combat it's like that but you know like two of the guys he was really close with that he trained with went to Okinawa and Iwo Jima and died they didn't come back and they didn't come back he just happened to get the signed a unit that was I think it was the fifth marine I think it was the fifth marine division and then when towards the end of the war they got rid of like the fifth I think he went to the first division but that was by the time he went to China but you know there is it really is it's uh it's surreal and it, it, it's to me it's humbling as well to see what these guys accomplished against insurmountable odds in a lot of cases so yeah and it's like every single one of these people like my dad gave the example they like cliff has said several times they had stories just like that you know tremendous stories that you're just i just thought it'd be, it'd be cool if you could push a button and hear their voice and hear them tell yeah 
you know, a story. But I mean, you can't do that. But I just that just popped in my mind. I don't know. Yeah. All right, so it is starting to get more towards twilight, but there's one more monument we'd like to find. I said 13. John's navigating here. It's a uh, China Burma monument, I think it said. Hey, Burma India monument. Burma India monument. Just kind of like to check it out. I mean, you could spend a whole lot more time here oh, walking yeah. around. Dude, there's a whole other thing over yeah. on the other side there. Oh, we didn't go to that. We gotta go to that building yet too. Yeah. I forgot about that. Sheesh. But we'll head. We'll find this monument first, and we'll head to that um, cool structure that's in the so middle. It looks like it's basically right off the road too. If you want to keep on going that way, right or left? Uh, right. 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 All right. So we are losing daylight. I wanted to check this one out here too. Yeah, the China. Burma India Monument. Let me see if I can adjust the iris a little bit more. Dedicated to the honor and in memory of those men and women who served their country in the interest of freedom for all mankind. In China. Yeah, your dad, that's right, yeah. yeah. At the end. Oh, here we go. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Well, that's actually really. Yeah, that's pretty. That's kind of powerful, actually. Oh, it's the CBs. Actually, when I was in college, my boss I worked for, he he was in the CBs. We build, we fight. All right, we are going to try and find get to that uh building I showed you at the beginning. I think it's where they have like. Concerts and stuff. Well, not really concerts, but the uh, a yeah, band. It's the Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Yeah. Have a, bands and stuff. Like an army band or something that comes in. And yeah. Plays. Not, not like rock bands, but. Yeah. Plays so like different. Probably suit Philip Sousa or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. John Philip Sousa. Or I just thought I'd film a little bit more as we get to that building. You just see, there's just markers everywhere. They say this is one of the most beautiful cemeteries, yeah. national cemeteries in the, in the country. It's a credit to the guys that take care of this. You just look row upon row. Do you want to go that way? Left or right? right. If I can get my directions. Because this will take you right behind it. Yeah, here's the building I was talking about. Let's check this out. I should never have been here. It's cool, like nice purple color in the sunset back there. Oh, there's more. Uh... Yeah, there's. This is all filled up with people too. Yeah. This is one of those I think that they can buy. Well, all the way up, all the way right up to the building. Even if things on here. Sorry, it's kind of getting dark out here. Memoriams on these stones. Let me try and change the iris there. Beautiful spot here, though.
in perpetual remembrance, POW MIA. They still march, but their footsteps make no sound. They still serve, but do not answer when their name is called. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. That's pretty fitting. Prisoners of war, missing in action. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, beautiful words back there too. It really makes you think a lot, actually. I got John reading those words back there. That is a cool shot right there. Yeah, so this was the Pennsylvania Veterans Memorial that we're just in there. So, at this point, I think I'll say goodbye to you. Let John say goodbye to you back there. Bye. But this was actually a really cool evening. I kind of, I forget what, I think I messaged him this morning or whenever about coming out here, so really glad we did. The sun is set, beautiful evening. So once again, thanks for coming along. Please like, just make you think. Anyway, 